Welcome back in. Um, it's been a bit of a head scratcher for football fans uh, with who's going to coach the All Whites. Now, I watched the news last night and it was pretty much looking like uh, Herdman, the Canadian, was coming. Uh, they pretty much said so, and today it's not happening. So, to walk us through the process of communication through the last 24 hours, uh, News Hub's a wonderful newsman, Andrew Gordy, joins us. Uh, Gordy, it's a head scratcher, or is it not? Nah, it's not really, Steph. Afternoon to you, afternoon to the listeners. Um, but the one thing I'll say is that these developments over the last 12 to 24 hours, I think, are pretty embarrassing for New Zealand football, and their communication is really what's to blame. Um, if, we, if we walk things back a little bit, yesterday they obviously announced a couple of games for the All Whites against China coming up. That's great news. Um, they said that the side will be led by interim coach Darren Baisley. Now, the key key sentence in, in this press release, it says that he's going to lead the team on an interim basis. The leading candidate for the permanent All Whites head coach role had to be called upon to help manage a family health issue. Now, that was pretty easy to find out because all you had to pick up, do was pick up the phone and anyone who has any kind of knowledge in football circles within this country uh, very freely picked up the fact that John Herdman is who's dealing with a family health issue at the moment. So essentially by deduction, New Zealand football confirmed and effectively announced who their permanent, oh, sorry, their leading candidate for the All Whites job. Mm. And then you have Andrew Cragnell yesterday speaking in reaction to confirmation of these games, admits on the record that their preferred candidate has three terms, is 100% on board. These are quotes that he's 100% on board, he's keen, uh, but it's simply this family issue that's come up that meant that he couldn't take up the job. Now, the reporting of all these facts, it's quite clear, has brought this issue to a head. Um, the alarm bells obviously were set off over in Canada, and within, and we're talking 12 hours, John Herdman has recommitted his future to Canada football. And within his statement, this is the pretty obvious part. John Herbin, in his statement, says, success at this level will always invite opportunity. I've received several offers in recent months, all of which I've turned down, including an offer from New Zealand football. So John Herbin confirms he had an offer to coach the All Whites from New Zealand football. Now, either we're saying John Herbin is lying, which I'm not prepared to say that, um, or New Zealand football offered the job to someone who wasn't their preferred candidate. Now, which part of that do you believe, Steph? <laughs> do I even need to say? <laughs> it's, we've been Zealand played. We've been played. Up, yeah, I think we have. I think we have. And look, that's in, in work and in business uh, every single day of the year all over the world. Someone who's in a position gets offered a job elsewhere and uses it as leverage to remain in their current job. Uh, uh, it's, that seems to be the logical thing here. And look, even yesterday when I was told, I was shocked when I, when I found out that John was the leading candidate for the All Whites job and they were confident in getting him. I was like, boy, oh boy, that's a massive coup. But of course, I'm sitting there going, why on earth would John Lehman leave the Canadian coaching position where they're going to be, remember, hosting or co-hosting a World Cup in just a few years' time? What an opportunity that is. Mm. Why would he be coming down under? Um, and, and I suppose returning home, as you, you could spin it that way. Um, and I don't know, I suppose perhaps he had his own personal risk. I'm really not sure. But I think now it's becoming clear that perhaps he was never completely serious about that or perhaps his situation changed. I don't know. But what is not in doubt here is that John Lehman categorically was New Zealand football's leading contender, leading candidate to be the next coach of the All Whites. And I think what is now apparent is that their leading contender has changed because their leading contender has dropped out of the race. Did, they've obviously gone too soon with the with the announcement that preferred candidates and it's just pretty much across the line and gave so many clues, as you say, you could deduce who it was. But they've just gone a day too early. They've just gone too early because they were so excited at the prospect of having them. We'll put it this way, Steph. If yesterday when they announced these games... They simply said, we're excited to announce that the All Whites are playing two games in China, uh, sorry, two games against China, um, and Darren Baisley will be our interim head coach as the search for a permanent All Whites head coach continues. Mm. We wouldn't be having this conversation. No. Was that? 
The, I guess the next important question, uh, talking to Andrew Gordy from News Hub, is where to from here? Because my understanding, these Buckingham's making a fortune in India. I don't, I don't think the Phoenix and New Zealand football relationships ever been good enough for them to allow Ufuk Tale to do two. Um, I just don't, where to? What happens? Yeah, that's a really good question, mate. Really good question. I think, um, I think Ufuk Tale has spoken this afternoon, and I, I think. Or so I've heard secondhand. I haven't heard this with my own ears yet, but uh, I believe he said that ship has sailed. Um, and so, uh, yes, in fact, that, that ship has sailed. Uh, ever reliable, Jason Pine. Um, <laughs> so that's not going to happen. Um, and what that means for Ufuk Tele's future, either with the All, All Wellington Phoenix or both or neither, is, is very difficult to say right now. But you're right, Dears Buckingham obviously on um, a great contract, so I would imagine, over in India. Um, but look, money isn't everything for, for everyone, so I don't know that we can definitively rule Dears Buckingham out of the picture. Um, there are certainly other names that have been met. Paul Nevin's an interesting one, I think. Uh, he's a former New Zealand Knights coach, and that's a blast from the past, obviously. Um, I always found Paul fantastic to deal with, um, and, I, and I, I, the feedback I had from players who played under him was a good coach. And most recently, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of startling, really. He's been part of Gareth Southgate's backroom staff for England. He's been regularly seen on the touchline during World Cups, et cetera, et cetera. So obviously got that experience at the highest level. Um, I don't know whether he is someone who would be seriously considered as a, as a permanent all-whites head coach and whether he would be here. Um, and there are other names that have been mentioned that I probably won't go into right now, but um, some interesting sort of left-field ones that I, I probably hadn't considered and ones that would uh, certainly not be ones that would to mind the New Zealand football community, but I think what is quite obvious now is that the, the person who was New Zealand football's preferred candidate for this job has has decided to go in another direction, and they're back to square one. Wow, amazing. Hey, Gords, I know it's an incredibly busy day for you. Really appreciate you uh, just sort of explaining us through that um, horrible cobweb with fly spray all over it. That is New Zealand football. <laughs> <laughs> all good cheers mate Andrew Gordy out of New Sub always appreciate his time we'll be back after a short break